Okay, hopefully you can hear me a little better <laughs> in this video. Um, like I've said before, I've, I have this program on my old computer right now, and so I've had some issues getting a microphone to work. But I think I've got it set up correctly now. Um, in the previous video, we added some sound to um, to our game when for when the ball collides with a pillar. And we can kind of see that in action here. Um, the sound might not carry through on my recording, but by clicking the play button you should be able to hear sound um, as the ball bounces off the pillars and the player. So now we're going to be moving into step 9, and in step 9 we're going to add these chocolate bricks to our game, and which is pretty easy to do. So moving into step 9, so for step 9 we're going to want to go back to the frame editor view. So click on your button to get you back to the frame editor view. And in your library window locate the object named milk. This is our chocolate bar. Um, I wonder if they named it milk for like milk chocolate? I'm <laughs> not really sure. But we want to locate the object named milk. This is a chocolate brick for our Choco Break game. Drag it with the mouse onto the play field. Um, and drop it somewhere in the top of the area of the frame. Drag and drop another milk object from the library and place it just under the one you have dropped. So drag and drop that first one out and then drag a second brick and place it just under the first brick. And we're going to repeat the same procedure until you have created a column of seven objects. So complete this procedure until you have seven bricks lined up. Okay, so I have my seven bricks stacked up on top of each other. Um, keep in mind, once you have a brick selected, you can use your arrow keys to kind of nudge the bricks um, so you get them in a perfect line there. So now we want to duplicate the column uh, to the right in order to create a realistic looking chocolate bar. So click on the top left of the bricks, click and drag a selection frame around the bricks. So that should select all the bricks for you. Now open the edit menu in the main menu bar and select the option copy. And all the bricks are now copied to the clipboard. Open the edit menu again and choose the option paste. And you'll know that your mouse cursor turned into kind of like a crosshairs. That means the object has been loaded into your mouse and you are carrying um, the next stack of bricks. So click in the play field beside the selected bricks and you'll see a new set of um, a new set of bricks then appears already selected. Now grab the selected bricks with your mouse by clicking and holding, position them at the correct position so that the new set is nicely lined up with the previous ones. So we're going to click and drag the second set of bricks and drag them over right next to our first set of bricks. So we have two columns of bricks there and you can use your arrows to kind of help nudge those into place. Once your new set of bricks is neatly positioned, you are then ready to paste once again and add another column to your growing set of chocolate bricks. So we can go back up to edit, paste, that loads the bricks into my cursor, click again to place them, and then I can click and drag to get them just in the right position. Again, you can use your arrow keys to line them up as well. you are going to continue this um, pasting pattern until you get a total of seven, or not seven, excuse me, twelve columns of bricks. So we want to create one big huge chocolate bar, so we need twelve columns of bricks. Once you have all twelve columns of your chocolate bricks created, you can select all of them and kind of nudge them back and forth um, to make sure they're right in the middle of all of your pillars. So now we want to define the event that's going to take place each time our ball collides with a brick. So from your experience with the tutorial, you should realize by now that we have to go back to the event editor, which is this button right here, and create a condition. We'll notice a new object in the object bar on the top has been added. You'll see the chocolate milk bar added to the top here, and we need to create another condition. So let's create a new condition 
and this is going to be a condition that includes our ball and the chocolate brick. So we want to right click on our ball, collision with another object, and we want to choose double click on the chocolate brick, and that creates our condition. So on the instance when the there's a collision between the ball and the brick, that's our condition, now we need to define the action. So the first thing we want to do is we want the ball to bounce when it hits a brick. So you should already know how to accomplish this by finding our ball object here, going to the open space, right clicking, going to movement and bounce. That tells our ball to bounce when it collides with a brick. So now what should happen when the when the bricks, uh, what should happen to the bricks when the ball hits them. When you create your own games, the entire process will often be about asking questions like that and finding the best solution. MMF2 Developer is full of perfect solutions for your games. As you learn more about MMF2, um, works with you and for you, you will quickly become more professional when it comes to solving every game's unique problems. MMF2 is designed to help you in every way as you develop your game. So what we want to do next is destroy the milk object when the ball collides with it. When we destroy an object, it's gone for good um, for that part of the game, or at least until the game starts again. Or we create a new instance of that object. Locate the empty square on the same line of the condition that we just created. And under the milk bar, um, we're going to right click on that open space and which opens our actions menu, then we're going to select destroy. So go down to the bottom and select destroy. And as with the rest of our game, we'll want to make a sound when the milk object is destroyed. So sound can be just as important as the visual aspects that the player sees. MMF2 is a multimedia tool, so we can use sound to reinforce the excitement of the game and add more realism and emotion. Hold your mouse under the sound object, and click with the right mouse button, choose samples, play samples, and locate the sound directory as before. So file, browse, and now we're going to choose the impact 02 file. And say open. And so now we see that we've added another action. So we have this condition, when the ball collides with the brick, we have a sound play, we have the ball bounce, and we have the milk bar destroyed. Okay, moving on to step 10. Step 10 talks about score, lives, and other objects. The score is an important part of any game. It tells how good a player is. It is a reward and a sign of accomplishment. Our breakout style game should have a score so that the player can earn points for destroying the bricks. This is part of making a game fun and challenging. So let's skip over that and go back to the frame editor. So click on the appropriate icon to get us back to the frame editor here. Okay, now we're going to discover some new objects. The objects we've been using so far, the ball, the bricks, the sugar bars, are called active objects. Active objects are the most used objects in a the game. They can move, collide, and they can be animated. So all of these objects that we have out here are active objects. There are many more objects available in MMF2, and they have different properties. Multi MMF2 is easy, but that does not mean it's not flexible and powerful. So let's discover a few new objects and see what they can help us accomplish. First, we have the quick backdrop object. In the library, down here, locate the object called Sky, and drag and drop it into the frame. As you can see, this object is a gradient of blue and looks very nice in our playfield. You also notice that this object goes in the background automatically. So line it up to match your um, whiteboard there. It is called a quick backdrop object. Quick backdrop objects are simple colored backgrounds. They do not have many properties, they cannot be moved, and they do not interfere at all with the active objects. They are just here as a backdrop to enhance the display. So again, this is a quick backdrop object. So it automatically goes to the back and has no interference with anything that we have um, set up with our active objects. With the sky object selected, we can see the different properties appear in the property toolbar. As you can see, there are many properties for you to change. Don't hesitate to give it a go. If you mess up your sky object, you only have to destroy it and retake from the library. So you can change the different colors, you can um, change the gradient to um, 
transform into different colors so you can kind of mess with this to make the game your own. I kind of liked how it was blue before. So you can adjust the colors and the backdrop um, experiment a little bit and see what you like there. Okay, next we need to display an object that um, displays the score. MMF2 provides one object dedicated to do this that is the score object. We will not find the score object in the library. It could reside there, however we simply did not insert it, but we are going to create a score object from scratch. So from the insert menu at the top, choose insert an object. As you can see, there's a lot of objects available to you. We want to choose games, and then we want to locate the score object, and say OK. So now you'll see my mouse turned it back to these crosshairs, so that means that is um, loaded with that score object. Um, click somewhere in the bottom of the play area, your object is now dropped. If you look in the property toolbar, you can see that the player affected to the score object is player 1. So over here in your properties settings, you see that player 1 is tied to this score object. We're going to drag this um, object down to the, it says to the bottom left of the play area, this will display our score. So next we need to display the number of lives for the player during the game. For that we will use a lives object. So as before we're going to create this object from scratch. So go back up to insert new object. And now we're going to click on the, should have games already selected and we're going to choose lives and say OK. So again that's loaded into our mouse and we can click on the area to drop these hearts which is going to represent the lives that we have available and we're going to plant these right here in the bottom right corner of our screen. Um, this is another place where I want you to check out the tutorial on your own because it goes over other objects that are available to you. Uh, the quick backdrop, the backdrop object, active objects, counter objects, so you have all these objects available to you um, in MMF2 so remember, uh, make sure that you read up on those objects um, so you can use them for your own games. That's going to conclude this next video, so we'll move on to step 11 in the um, video coming up.